Hey guys, my name is Chris, and today on the Eclipse Inside YouTube channel, we are making some floating shelves. That's right, floating shelves that are the strongest ever, right? At least in our opinion, anyway. So there's no hardware required. They're all made from ready available materials, and let's see how we got it done. Let's go. All right, well, let's get started, guys. Like always, thank you for joining me. Today, we're gonna make these floating shelves out of primarily Baltic birch plywood. This stock is three quarters of an inch thick, and I'm gonna rip it down on the table saw here to two and a half inch strips. So as you can tell by the title of this video, this is the absolute strongest way I have found to make these floating shelves. I've made quite a few sets of these in my lifetime, and I decided I'd make a video and document and tell you guys just how I get this done. Then I promise you guys, your patience will be rewarded. At the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you the technique and how I make these floating shelves stay level their entire lifetime. All right, now, making my way to the crosscut sled, I go ahead and set up a stop block to cut these pieces to length. My client wanted 60 inch shelves, that way I'm cutting these pieces into 56 inch strips. Here, I join them together to double them up. These are gonna be part of the brackets that are gonna stick out of the wall that are gonna hold the shelf in place. And unfortunately, as I'm filming this, my camera dies. But I made a makeshift diagram of how these things are made. Basically, you do a series of layers with this plywood and the brackets themselves that stick out at 90 degrees to create mortise and tenon joints all throughout. This is a small version, but you get the gist. And you're gonna see these later in the video as well. Now I'm cutting some 3 8 inch plywood into the strips that are gonna become the bottom and the tops of the floating shelves themselves. Here are the pieces that are gonna be the skeletal structure that are gonna be inside the shelves that are gonna go in between the brackets that I made earlier. As you can see, I line up the brackets, make my marks, make sure it fits, grab a little wood glue, and make some square marks on there, making sure these are 90 degrees to each edge, and glue them in. Wait about five minutes, let that glue it here. Go ahead and put glue on the top, and nail it all in place. Once that shelf is put together, I go ahead and test the bracket. Looks like I got a nice snug fit. Very happy with how this is turning out. At this point, I go ahead and rip up some poplar to be the right width, and then I cut each piece to length. These are gonna be the trim pieces that are gonna cover the edges and the front of the shelf itself. Real simple installation, a little bit of glue, a little bit of brad nails, no big deal. Now, as I'm installing this front piece of trim, I go ahead and make sure to line it up just right and be careful here. You don't wanna have any blowout with your nail gun, so keep your nail gun perpendicular to the length of the piece. Just like that, everything's looking good. With all four shelves completed, I go ahead and run through the grits from 120 to 180 to 220, and then put a nice hand chamfer on all the pieces here, giving it a nice finished look. I do wanna tell you that at this point, my client did give me creative control. He wanted it to be rustic, and he wanted these shelves to be dark. And I asked him what kind of stain he wanted, he didn't say. So, he gave me creative control to try something new, so guess what, we're gonna torch it. As I go ahead and start this process, I realize this is gonna take forever. So, I decided to bring out the big guns here, and guess what, it worked extremely well. Sort of, more of that in a minute. So I got the big propane torch out to make quick work of this. I go ahead and take light passes on each side, torching this thing up nice and dark. I go ahead and finish each piece once they've cooled down with a little bit of polycrylic. And things are looking good, man. I mean, check this out. No stain, no nothing. Those things are looking awesome. However, disaster. I come out in a few hours and the plies have delaminated from the plywood, creating these awful looking bubbles. I am so upset at this point. My wife comes out and sees that I'm upset, and she's like, hey, don't despair, I have an idea. I was gonna call a client and tell them, hey, we're done, I gotta remake these, this is crazy. But she gave me this idea. She said, take it off, use the screwdriver, break it. This was painful, guys, I'm not gonna lie to you. Taking all this time and all this labor to do all this, and then boom, I had to just strip it down to the core again. Uh, you know what, I, I wasn't a believer, but I went ahead and did it. So what I'm doing here is I'm essentially sanding down where the pieces are delaminated right to where the adhesion still sticks to ply to the boards, creating this kind of, well, I think it looks pretty awful. But again, my wife and her creative mind, she says, go ahead and use some of that dark stain you have and let's get this done. So as I'm looking at this, 
I maybe kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel. I go ahead and apply this stain, and I'm thinking, hmm, this isn't too bad. Now, check this out. It almost looks like we did this on purpose, okay? So, essentially, we delaminated the plies. We have a little bit of brown, a little bit of black, a little dark. I think it looks pretty cool. Now, the beauty of it is, is after I put some spray lacquer on these, I decided to change the finish at the last minute. My client, at the end of the day, loved it. <laughs> it was freaking awesome. Well, now that woodworking tragedy has been avoided, we go ahead and put some copper furniture tacks on the ends, three in total on each side, giving it a nice look. Now, I made this frame off camera, but let me show you how I did it with this demonstration. I took strips of plywood. One strip was three inches, one strip was three and a half inches. Essentially, if you join them together, creating a half lap at the 90, you also create a rabbit that the mirror can rest in. This was a cool technique and it worked out really well and I'm really happy with how this turned out. At this point, I break out this carpeted piece of plywood that I got and it's used for when I want to finish something off and I don't want to mar the surface. So I put a piece of eighth inch backer board on this mirror and then attach it with some finish nails just like this. Turns out pretty nice. This mirror actually is one of my favorite pieces I made in the whole build. Now to go ahead and finish this thing off, we use some furniture tacks as well, but this time I'm gonna go ahead and use the ones that are black in color. A little contrast, but it's kind of the same technique. Now it's time for installation. Now pay close attention because this is how these shelves are gonna stay level their entire lives. You install these with five and a half inch lag screws in the top portion of the bracket. What that does is it puts pressure on the shelf to be upwards just a little bit, by one or two degrees. When you install the shelf, you essentially put weight on it and it stays level for its entire life. It will not sag below 90, I promise you that. And just like that, you slide the shelves on, and looking mighty nice. At this point, the installation is coming together pretty well. You can see there in the corner, let me show you what that is. That's a small frame that's been lagged into the corner stud as well and a small floating shelf to go over that because, you know, he wants a place to put his speakers. Now, also, this is a technique I use when I'm hanging something really heavy. This mirror is probably about 80 pounds and I like using two drywall anchors if I can't go into the studs because two seems to give it a little bit more rigidity and staying level. And there you go guys, the installation was a success and I really want to thank my client for allowing me the opportunity to make this for him. He loved it and that makes all the difference in the world. When your client's happy, I'm happy. Thank you so much guys. Also, one last look at the floating shelves in this man cave. I really love how these turned out. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, we always invite you to subscribe over there. There's other videos over here as well, and we always appreciate the viewership. This has been A Glimpse Inside. My name is Chris, and until next time, woo! <laughs> See you then.